Are you interested at all in adding a veteran quarterback who's been a starter in this league over the next couple months? <laughs> We're always competing, and I know you, I'm not saying anything you didn't think I was going to say, <laughs> but uh, that's if, fortunately, that's that's always been the way we've operated, and it fits again, so we're we're looking, uh, you know, I don't I don't see us, you know, making a trade for anybody that, at all, I, I don't see that happening, but um, we, we're certainly going to continue to be open to the chances to help our club, and, and uh, meanwhile, we're just going to be battling and, and, and competing our tails off, but that's, you know, there's always, there's always possibilities, so we keep open to that. So if a guy, you wouldn't trade necessarily for a veteran quarterback, but if someone became available that was you know all of a sudden a free agent that's a different thing in there's no chance i'm going to tell you anything more than i just told you but, but i love you for trying mike jones from usa today um today the seahawks along with the bears the commanders the ravens the jets the packers the chiefs uh this weekend i should say these teams are kicking off rookie mini camp uh the seahawks do not have a quarterback that they drafted joining them at, the, at that rookie camp. So they go into it, and I believe this was your number one remaining outstanding issue uh, post-draft, is are the Seahawks really serious about going at this thing this year with Drew Locke and Geno Smith, respectfully? Um, maybe they're just looking at 2023 and say, you know what, we'll handle it next year. We'll, you know, we'll, uh, we'll tank, so to speak. I know that's a dirty word, and we'll handle it next year. Mm. Or maybe they're playing chicken with the Browns for Baker Mayfield. That's the only spot that seems to make sense for him. What is going on in Seattle? Why aren't they losing sleep in Seattle over their lack of an established starting quarterback? You know, this is a question I really would love to know the answer to. I check with people multiple times a week to find out what is going on and how can they really seriously be okay at quarterback. And there really is not a whole lot of talk. Like, they're playing this very close to the vest. I still talk to people who feel like at some point, Baker Mayfield will wind up there. But really, what's the rush? Also, the Browns don't have a whole lot of leverage here because obviously, you know, they don't want him. They've got Deshaun Watson there. And then also the thing that complicates it is the 18 million guarantee that Baker Mayfield has. So eventually somebody's going to have to do something about that. And so I think for right now, the Seahawks are sitting back and waiting. Um, you know, I still would be surprised if Baker Mayfield doesn't wind up there. A lot of people I talk to think that. But then at the same time, there's others who say, you know what? They very well could roll with Geno Smith, who's been in the organization for quite a while, if he and have him and uh, Drew Locke compete, even though that's probably a scary sound if you are a Seahawks fan. Unless you just want a quarterback you know, just, at 23. If you're a Seahawks fan and you want C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young, that's probably music to your ears. <laughs> right, Mike? Yeah, <laughs> Mike, you Mike, just don't yeah, holler, that know, is. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm wondering, though, uh, Michaels, uh, Mike's, uh, if you were, if, if you will, are we making too much of the quarterback situation in Seattle because maybe they're just what they're telling us is we got too many. We got too many holes. So even if we bring in a, a good quarterback and I think Baker Mayfield's a good quarterback. You guys may disagree. We bring in a good quarterback. So what? We, we're this is a two. It's a two year rebuilding plan. So what's a good quarterback gonna do for us right now? Is that is that is that a possibility? They just there's no urgency because their team is not set up that way. No, it, it is very much a possibility because when you look at what a lot of teams are doing around the league is they are realizing, okay, let's set the table um, before we get that quarterback. You know, maybe it's you, you drop a veteran in, maybe it's you dropping uh, a rookie in that you draft, but you have to get things around him set rather than thinking that, okay, we'll get a quarterback and then figure everything else after that. So it is possible um, that they know that, okay, we've got to rebuild, but still it just seems like, Okay, Pete Carroll, you know, isn't getting any younger. They still have veterans on this roster that they have to take advantage of the window of opportunity that they have here. Now, obviously, they didn't capitalize on what they had with Russell Wilson. Um, but is Baker Mayfield a bridge? Um, is Geno Smith the bridge? Drew Locke? Um, you know, we'll see. But, you know, you're not crazy for thinking that maybe they'll go ahead and say, look, we'll just take our lumps with what we have right here, fix our roster, retool and then address that in the draft or free agency uh, in 23. Well, let me ask you this. Let's, let's, I want to hone in on Baker and, and just get your intel on, on the bottom line when it comes to Baker. Like, were people not that high on him to begin with, even though he went number one overall out of Oklahoma after he won the Heisman? Was this a John Dorsey number one pick and the rest of the league had a different opinion? 
Has the league's opinion of him changed over the years that he's been in Cleveland? The reason I say that is this. $18.8 million guaranteed. I, I get it. You might not want to eat all of that if you don't have to. But the opportunity to have a reclamation project on the cheap, as in a mid-round draft pick, hypothetically speaking, in exchange for a former number one overall pick, seems like a steal on the surface. What is it about Baker Mayfield? Polarizing puts it kindly. What is it about Baker Mayfield in locker rooms or in front offices where people aren't falling over themselves? A seemingly desperate team like Seattle isn't falling over itself to see, well, if we get Baker Mayfield in here, then we ain't got to worry about, you know, being in position against CJ Stroud or or uh, or Bryce Young or anybody else. We get we get somebody somebody else's trash is our treasure. Why don't people view Baker Mayfield the way that Michael Holly seems to? Because I'm not even that big of a fan of his, but it seems like the league agrees with me. And that's well, that's, it, that's interesting to say the least. No, no, it is it's fascinating. But but I know coming out of the draft, there were you know he was their teams were very split on him. But the Browns and the guys who did their talent evaluation were gung ho on him. But there were people who felt like, hey, Josh Allen would probably be the better guy. He's bigger, more faster, more versatile, bigger arm, and all of that. And so, look, Baker has done some good things. He's had some inconsistencies as well. But I was just asking somebody today. I was like, okay, well. If it's not the Seahawks, then where's the good fit? He said, well, anybody who wants a quarterback that's 26 and has got a playoff victory under his belt and former number one overall pick. That sounds like something really good to have onto your roster. Yeah, right? <laughs> so it is very, you know, but you have Baker who, look, he couldn't work it out with um, uh, with uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Um, Jarvis Landry wanted out of there. Um, you know, it, he hasn't been able to take that other step um, in big moments. You know, he hasn't come through outside of that playoff win. So a lot of people kind of look at him and they're like, yeah, I mean, he's OK, but we don't have to, you know, go crazy and, and rush to go get him because they know eventually this thing's going to play out. And again, like we said, the Browns have no leverage here. Um, they have, you know, he's not going to wind up there. And why give up a whole bunch for somebody that, you know, isn't going to wind up being there? We'll see. But a lot of the teams around, they feel like, OK, Baker might be at a ceiling right here where we look at some of these kids coming out of the draft coming forward and maybe their ceilings are higher. All right, uh, Mike Jones, hold on here, man. I'm about to ask you a personal question. Get ready. Get ready. Uh, who is the most famous person who follows you on social media or a famous person who follows you on social? Um, I guess Dale Earnhardt Jr. Hey, Pretty good. I That's mean, pretty good. Pretty good. You know, okay. When I left, you and that know, means something. He, he tweets at me. Um, you know, he gave me a shout oh, out when I left the Washington Post to go to USA Today. You know, he's a big Washington football fan. Um, so I was hey, kind of shocked that he followed me. So I guess that's the one. See, see, he follows you. That means something. You're proud of that. And so the San Francisco 49ers, they were once followed by Debo Samuel, unfollowed. They probably took that personally. Now followed again. Right. Does that mean? That let's see, uh, Debo is Dale Earnhardt Jr., and the 49ers are Mike Jones, and it's all good now, right? Well, I think the 49ers are probably hoping that, but I think what it all boils down to is you have a 20 something year old kid that, you know, we're, you know, us old people, you know, we're still trying to figure out this social media game the unfollowing, the removing of the pictures, the, the refollowing. Um, is he trying to play nice now and hope that they work with him? Um, or, or what I when I asked people about this when he first unfollowed him some of them said I didn't know he ever followed us that's not something I concern myself with so if you're the 49ers <laughs> I think you know if we said hey John Lynch uh, Debo's following you again he would be like okay that's nice I, I didn't know until you guys told me the first time that he done followed us yeah um, I mentioned that Little Lee's commanders, uh, the Seahawks, the Bears, the Chiefs, the Packers, Jets and the Ravens all kick off rookie mini camps this week. Um, that Ravens draft class um, sounds like the 74 Steelers uh, with the way they nail the draft as they always do. But a lot of excitement about the Ravens draft class and yet there's still unfinished business 
as it relates to Lamar Jackson's extension, but even in the short term, trading Marquise Brown to Arizona and not having an established threat on the outside. I love Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota, uh, who they drafted last year, along with, you know, they have Duvernay, Porsche, they have some guys, um, but nobody that's a, you know, thousand yard receiver the way Marquise Brown is. What's the, what's the, 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 the temperature within the building at Owings Mills when it comes to Lamar, especially now that he seemingly uh, is disappointed at the loss of his number one wide receiver. We know he loves Mark Andrews. Yeah, you know, I don't get the sense that they're too terribly worried. They still want to get this thing done, but there is some awkwardness there. Um, he knew, you know, he, you know, we saw the tweet, the WTF, um, you know, like acting like he was surprised about that trade, but maybe he felt like it never was going to happen. But I was looking at them saying, okay, well, are they about to load up on wide receivers here since he's gone. I mean, you have to give this guy something to work with. I know that's not a pass first offense, but you have to have somebody. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the offseason plays out. Do, is it something that they go find a veteran um, that's that's out there that they can swing a trade or somebody that gets cut, um, you know, after June 1? Uh, you, you've got to give them something to work with here. Uh, I just find it very interesting that he's not clued in in a lot of this stuff in these decision makings as you're trying to make him happy and convince him to resign here uh but i still from what i'm told he's in no rush uh he has got no problem playing out this season right here and then uh you know addressing the contract thing because he sees every single time a quarterback gets paid the money jumps and jumps and jumps and so he knows okay well Kyler Murray is going to get done. Other guys out there are going to get done. And then eventually I'll wait as they keep on resetting the bar. Then I'm going to continue to prove my worth and then I'll get taken care of myself. All right. Uh, uh, tell, tell me this. Uh, the team you used to cover uh, the Washington Commanders. I understand that they got a lot of capital from moving back on the draft board. See, I like, like Michael and I, we like, we both love the draft. We love the draft and draft day deals on stuff. But they could have had Olave. They could have had Jamison Williams. Um, they couldn't have had, gotten Garrett Wilson, but they wind up with Dotson. Right. From moving all the way back, like, does that make why did they do that? I mean, I understand they got capital, but if you really want a wide receiver, why not get for some people the best receiver on the board was Jamison Williams right. or the third best receiver on the board in Olave. Why did you move all the way back and you possibly reach on Dotson? What, what do you think their logic was there? Well, the capital was a big thing. Um, because they felt like, hey, we need, we have a number of holes. We need as many receivers as we possibly can. But even before the draft, they, this was a kid they really liked. I was expecting him to go after a big target guy to kind of compliment Terry McLaurin. You have Curtis Samuel who can operate out of the slot. But they really like Dotson. Um, he's a guy they had rated similarly to some of these guys, even though maybe he's a little undersized. But they see him as a fierce competitor, a guy who goes after those balls in the air. Um, really uh, tough to cover out of the slot. Uh, it, it's an interesting move to me, too, uh, just because of the fact of the other guys who were out there um, when they were sitting there at 11. But moving back, they felt like they could get pieces to help themselves other other places and also get a guy that they were very high on that maybe um, was overlooked by some people. Last thing I got for you, man, I'm sure a lot of Jets fans are wondering this. Um, that awesome first round and really that entire draft class makes its debut this week at rookie minicamp. These last two drafts feels like the Jets are in route to respectability. Do they actually start translating these drafts into victories? That's the big question. And this is the thing about this time of year. Everybody has all these draft grades and it looks like you've had a great gra great draft as you get these three first round picks. But how do you use them? How do you fit them into your system? How do you develop them is a the big question because we see teams have multiple first round picks all the time and they don't really pan out something special. The Jets, do, didn't they like, have five you know, once upon a time? Didn't they, you know, like, what, what year was that where they had five of them things? <laughs> and then how did it help them, right? So um, yeah. I am still, I'm, I'm pumping the brakes before I really praise them. The moves that they made look smart. They're guys that can help them on their defense. Obviously Wilson will help um, Zach uh, Wilson. Uh, but again, 
we got to see how they use them. We haven't seen the Jets see yeah. anything through um, with, you know, um, sustained success. Uh, they keep on hitting the reset button. So uh, we'll wait and see. I like all of those players, but again, how are they going to be used? Are they going to be developed the right way? Um, you know, is Zach Wilson even the guy? There's still a lot of questions for me before uh, I'm willing to, to crown them as having one of the great drafts. Well, this is franchise mode. They'd be winning. Uh, Mike Jones, USA Today, we appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. You guys have a good one. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.